move on to the uh, second presentation uh, by Naoki Kuwabara, who will be talking about uh, Pedro Gomez and the Japanese, Japanese Buddhism in the 16th and 17th centuries. Okay. Thank you for coming in this room. <laughs> so uh, many of the uh, themes in, in this conference is about the modern uh, Japanese philosophers. But my uh, presentation is uh, tension between uh, Western uh, philosophy brought uh, by a, a mission, a Christian missions, uh, before the age of the uh, persecution and uh, Japanese Buddhism at that date. So, I will uh, read my uh, paper. Uh, at the end of the ah, so so I sorry I changed the uh, title uh, as uh, I was uh, <coughs> a chair chair uh, uh, into this uh, Pedro Gomez, but I changed uh, Pedro Gomez into the Jesuits. So not uh, uh, only uh, yeah yeah not only so. At the end of the 16th century, the Society of Jesus established in Japan an institution of higher education called a Collegium, a college. Uh, the Spanish Jesuit Pedro Gomez was invited to Japan as a professor for this Collegium or by Alessandro Varignano, a visitor to the Asian missions. A manuscript of Gomez's uh, teaching materials survives in the Vatican Library together with a Japanese translation. And these were published together in uh, 1997 as Compendium Catholicae Veitatis, Jesus Kai Nihon Collegio Kogi Yoko. Among many philosophical topics, Gomez prominently uh, treats the problem of the soul, uh, anima, introducing uh, Aristotle's uh, De Anima, uh, basically according to the interpretation of Thomas Aquinas. In this presentation, I will give an overview of the significance of Gomez's emphasis on the theory of the anima uh, in the context of uh, contemporaneous J Japanese thought. Uh, <coughs> Europeans in the age of exploration generally shows, uh, showed an attitude of ethnocentrism, and they looked down on the religions and cultures of the peoples uh, they encountered as they circled the, the globe, uh, taking territory and the resources they, uh, there they could. On this point, missionaries were no ex exception. For example, uh, Varignano's uh, predecessor, Francisco Cabral, uh, uh, discouraged missionaries from learning about Japanese culture. Uh, 20th, 20th century Jesuit's description of the Japan uh, mission often contrasts him with his successor, Varignano, uh, whom uh, they credited with the princip principle of adaptation, accommodatio. At least, uh, Varignano recognized that in Japan he would not be able to impose Christianity by force, as he himself was doing in India and Africa, and his uh, colleagues were doing in the uh, Americas. And uh, so he established a sem seminary and college uh, there uh, as a space for developing Japanese personnel who were thoroughly steeped in the uh, intellectual traditions of Latin Christianity, yet able to communicate this in Japan. He dreamt of breeding uh, an intellectual center in Japan uh, to match the great European universities. In China, Matteo Ricci, is famous for the adaptation of Christianity to Chinese culture and the introduction of Chinese culture to Europe. And indeed, he was a disciple of Varignano at the St. Andrea Novitiate in Rome. Varignano assigned Ricci to the China mission, and he landed in Macau in 1582, just as the Japan courage was in its infancy. Ritchie is well known for his favorable attitude toward and deep understanding of Chinese culture. And although a recent scholarship has complicated the picture, especially when we consider the Chinese terms uh, controversy and the Chinese rights controversy to which his uh, innovation led, led 
we can perhaps recognize Varinan's influence in a, a cultural relativism set within a religious absolutism. Ricci sought to find and develop things in no European cultures uh, which could be used to support Christianity. Valignano's principle of accommodation is often narrated as a forerunner to the idea of inculturation in the modern Catholic Church. Insofar as this idea has also run parallel to policies of uh, neo-colonial economic development uh, since the late 20th century, uh, Valignano was indeed uh, centuries uh, ahead of his time. However, uh, he may uh, have felt about Japanese culture, he took, a host <coughs> he took a hostile attitude towards Japanese Buddhism, and he developed his criticism against it in his book, Catechisms uh, Christianae Fidei, uh, Nihon no Catechismo. His ho hostile attitude towards Japanese Buddhism is often pointed to as a limitation when he, we evaluate him from the standard of the today's Catholic Church, which positively engages in dialogue between Eastern and Western spirituality. Uh, his attitude against Japanese Buddhism was in striking contrast to his disciple uh, Ritchie's attitude to the Chinese Confucianism. Uh, there may be uh, uh, political reasons for this, but I will mention some purely intellectual reasons because they form the background of for Gomez's theory of the anima. As I pointed out before, among many philosophical topics, <coughs> Gomez chose the problem of the soul, anima. This choice reflects common concern about, among the Jesuits in those days. Since the time of the Francisco Xavier, Jesuits had been aware that there is serious gap in understanding between themselves and traditional Japanese thought on the question of whether humans, or indeed anything at all, have essential animating principle called souls, and whether uh, these souls, or, or indeed anything at all, are immortal. In the chapters on the, on the anima in the uh, compendium, Gomez follows the Thomistic interpretation of Aristotle's uh, theory of the intellect. On the one hand, Aquinas interprets the active intellect of Aristotle as inherent in a personal soul. The active intellect is the intellect that Aristotle himself declared to be immortal. Furthermore, Aquinas insists that not just the active intellect, but the whole soul is self-existent, and therefore it is an immortal intellectual soul anima intellectualis. That is to say, the, the Thomistic interpretation that Gomez adopted was unique in that uh, it emphasized the immortality of the entire human soul. The adoption of the Thomistic interpretation of Aristotle was the common principle of the Jesuits and the, pre, uh, the uh, provisions of the Ratio Studiorum, uh, or uh, rule for study. But what is remarkable in Gomez is his emphasis on the immortality of the soul. Gomez writes several chapters emphasizing the immortal nature of the soul based on the, <coughs> its uh, non-material character, in addition to introducing the soul theory of Aristotle. In short, uh, Gomez's fi uh, philosophical stay, uh, stance is characterized by his emphasis on the problem of the soul and his insistence on its immortality. The reason why Gomez chose the problem of the soul and its immortality in particular can be understood in this context of the confrontation between the Jesuits and the Buddhism in Japan. <coughs> uh, in Mahavaipura Pumira Hastura Pasanata Sutra, uh, one can find the phrase, worldly desires are nothing other than spiritual enlightenment, bonno sokubodai. This phrase is a famous expression of the doctrine of the original enlightenment, uh, namely the idea that all sentient beings are already enlightened 
and only need to realize it in one way or another. This doctrine is characteristic of the uh, Chinese Ten uh, Tendai school, uh, which in the 9th century entered Japan as the Tendai school and went on to exert special influence on medieval uh, Japanese culture. Uh, in a recent work, uh, Shinzo Kawamura uh, points out that the main target of the Jesuit critic of Japanese Buddhism was precise, precisely uh, this doctrine of original enlightenment. Uh, that is, the enlightenment which all sentient beings possess inherently but are, are separated from by worldly desires. They must overcome these uh, worldly desires and realize enlightenment, but not realize in the sense of fulfilling something that was not true before. Rather, they must realize that it was fulfilled all, thing, uh, all along. In contrast to original enlightenment, uh, this is called origina originated enlightenment, shikaku. Uh, or original enlightenment is a hongak. Uh, <clears throat> the awakening of faith in the Mahayana also makes uh, this disti distinction between original and originated enlightenment. As the Japanese Tendai school developed, it began to call itself the school of original enlightenment. Uh, in opposition to what it uh, pejoratively called school of originated en enlightenment, uh, that is, schools that believe that enlightenment is something achieved rather than reals in the Tendai schemes. Uh, but <coughs> And, and modern uh, Japan uh, so Buddhist uh, scholars uh, evaluate uh, highly uh, the original enlightenment thought. Uh, Tendai original uh, quotation, uh, Yoshiro Tamura, for, for example, Tendai original enlightenment thought completely breaks through the, and transcends every thought of dual distinction, such as deluded clinging, clinging bono, versus enlightenment bodai the circle of bias and death shoji as, uh, versus nirvana, nihan, eternity kwon versus the present uh, konichi, essence versus phenomenon, ri tai ji, uh, and investigate uh, the, the state of the absolute non-duality into the, the apex. Uh, therefore, original enlightenment thought is the apex of the philosophical principles in Buddhism. However, Tendai original enlightenment thought declares that all sentient beings already possess enlightenment. Therefore, according to more popular understanding, neither ascetic practice nor religious precepts are necessary, and even ordinary mortals bump, uh, admit it just as they are. Practically, there is no need for ascetic, ascetic practice or morality. According to Kawamura, uh, the reason why Jesuits uh, in those days emphasized the, the immortality of the soul was to criticize uh, this tendency in popular understanding of Tendai Hong original uh, enlightenment, which they thought was characteristic of Japanese Buddhism in general, uh, must uh, result in the uh, ab abrogation of morality. Accordingly, they uh, Jesuits intentionally took the position of the school of originated enlightenment in order to emphasize moral norms. According to Kawamura, uh, this was because uh, the Jesuits emphasized the idea of reward and punishment, not only in this world, but also in the next world, as the basis of all moral norms. For this reason, uh, an immortal soul was needed to be the ethical subject who receives reward and punishment. Another school of Japanese Buddhism with which the Jesuits were in a dialogue was the Jodo Shinshu, uh, one sect of the Pure Land School in the Japan uh, founded by Shinran. Pure Land schools believe in very uh, vicarious enlightenment by acceptance of the vow of the Buddha Amitabha, 
Amitabha vowed to save all sentient beings from deluded clinging by performing a millennia word of ascetic practice in, on their behalf. This school was imported to Japan in, in the Heian period, undergoing a, a populist turn and a sectarian split in the Kamakura period. Jodo Shinshu is the most influential and popular sect of Pure Land schools. The doctrine of the Jodo Shinshu is characterized by uh, absolute reliance on the power of the other uh, Buddha, Zettai Tariki. However, uh, this doctrine itself involves the danger of uh, presuming upon the vow, Hongan Bokori. And this sect had been suffering from this danger throughout its history. The doctrine of Dojo, the Jodo Shinshu might be considered to be a radical form of the tendency to the uh, Tendai original, original Enlightenment thought. In the Catechisms, uh, Varignano develops his critic along precisely uh, these lines. For him, the Jodo Shinshu believes that only chanting the name of Buddha is enough for salvation. Since the days of Kavran, uh, the Jesuits recognize a similarity between Shinran's doctrine of the absolute reliance on the power of the Buddha and Martin Luther's doctrine of absolute reliance on the power of God. Shinran and Luther both construct their religious thought based on the, an aware, awareness of human powerlessness. Therefore, their doctrines share the same structure, uh, namely a distrust of human effort. We should remember that the Society of Jesus was an act, uh, active leader of the Counter-Reformation. Here in Japan, they found opponents parallel with those whom they confronted in Europe. Both in Europe and Japan, the Jesuits confronted religious thought that emphasized human powerlessness and uh, passivity in salvation. They rep uh, replied by stressing active human effort in mortal, uh, moral life. This is clear from the fact that the Jesuits at that time had a special interest in and, and favor for the Stoic schools, whose motto is uh, Old Empire's Can, Potes Quia Debes. It was against such a background of the Japanese thought of his day that Gomez emphasis on the, on the immortality of the human soul. The thought of modern Japanese Buddhist uh, thinkers such as Nishida Kitaro and Suzuki Daises was based, based mainly on their experience of Zen practice within the Rinzai, uh, Rinzai school of Zen Buddhism. They share with Tendai original uh, enlightenment thought the common philosophical principle of Buddhism that breaks through and transcends every thought of dual distinction and investigates the state of the absolute non-duality. They like paradoxical uh, expressions that calculate uh, contradictory concepts <coughs> with the uh, character like soku, uh, that is, uh, snawachi is none other than, just like the Tendai motto, worldly desires are none other than spiritual enlightenment. On the one other side, they scorn the Aristotelian logic of the rationality based on the law of contradiction. Uh, now I skip uh, the episodes. Seeing such expressions, uh, how do you feel and think about and react? If the reaction uh, refusing it as nonsense is one extreme, uh, the reaction appreciating it blindly as profound philosophical principles would be another extreme. It seems to be the position of the moderation to think that such contradictory expressions presuppose, presuppose the existence of the deep religious experience and as far as the expression is supported by the, the experience, there is a possibility that there is no real contradiction. Perhaps it may be said that 16th, 16th century European Jesuits inclined toward uh, dismissiveness. We may think that here was their limit. <coughs> here, 
We must consider the difference between two types of language that are the basis for the two types of thoughts. One type of language is the language of rationality. The other type of language is the language, is the language of spirituality. Jesuits in those days, including Gomez and Varignano, made full use of scholastic arguments that they learned from the, the education they received. The essence of scholasticism is the pursuit of the university, that is, the, the, the effort to remove ambiguity of concepts by dividing them. The ground of scholasticism is the public space of the disputatio in the universities. Scholasticism is a typical kind of thought based on the language of rationality. On the other hand, the original setting of the language of spirituality is in the world of religious experience. Here, the role of public language is very limited and often paradoxical rhetoric is used. This type of language would be rightly understood only under the support of religious experience. If the language of spirituality is separated from the depth of the religious experience, the result must be misunderstanding, nonsense, and degradation such was seen in the vulgar Lutheran interpretation of original enlightenment thought. Uh, we can find an example of such danger in the language of spirituality, also in the history of the Western thought. Meister Eckhart was condemned as a heretic uh, because of the paradoxical expressions he used in his uh, homiletic writings. In the history of Western thought, there was a contrast or a tension between uh, the language of rationality and the language of spirituality. For example, Jean Luc Lerre showed the contrast between the scholastic theology and the monastic theology in the uh, tw <clears throat> 20th century. The Catholic Church today has respect for depth uh, for the religious experience of Zen masters, as uh, the former uh, presentation of Ms. Shimanua showed, <clears throat> and engaged in the dialogue of the East West spirituality. However, at those times, there were no bridge between language of rationality and that of spirituality. This rock was certainly the limit of Gomez and Varignano. And the synthesis or mediation of two levels of language has been the greatest theme of philosophy throughout its history. Uh, thank you for your attention. <clears throat>